Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today's lesson is going to focus specifically on setting up your real estate business for a flipping operation. Okay, so if you are in real estate and you purchase homes, renovate them, and then sell them, I'm going to show you how to get set up in QuickBooks so that you can start managing those accounts and tracking them in QuickBooks. Okay. If you do rental properties, we have videos for that too, but this one's specifically for those of you who do rehabs. And actually this came as a, as a response to a question I received from Andy from Texas. So thanks Andy for identifying a few holes in the earlier videos that we're gonna go through today, okay? So what I have in front of us here is kind of a fresh set of sample books that I'm gonna use to get set up in. And the first thing we need to discuss is how we're gonna differentiate our projects, okay? So if I'm working on you know, a home over here versus a home over there, how do I uh, segment my report so that I'm looking at one project versus the other? And this has been a debate for a while now, and I've had some videos in the past that we've used classes to differentiate between projects. And that is a fine way to do it, but you should know that QuickBooks has started to instill limits on how many classes we can use, okay? And you can only do 50. So if you plan on flipping more than 50 houses, you might have to um, think of a different way. And a different way could potentially be to use customers, okay? And a cool part about using customers to differentiate is I bounce into customers right now. So you call a property a customer. Is once you start using customers, you can have projects below that. And projects is a newer module within QuickBooks Online that has a start and stop point, allows you to tell the status of your project, does some cool budgeting as well. And you can't really use this feature unless you're using customers, okay? So for that reason and because of the limits, I kind of have started to, to push most of my clients toward using customers, okay? And what you can use classes for is something a little bit more generic. And what I do in my business now is I use classes to differentiate between rental properties versus flipping. So I can pull a profit and loss statement and say, like, here's how my flipping operation is doing, here's how my rental operation is doing. Okay, so that's the first thing is that I'm going to suggest we use customers and then projects. So let's do that. Let's create a customer for a new house that we're flipping. So let's assume that we just purchased a house or we're about to purchase a house and we want to uh, start getting ready to track it. So the first thing you would do is you would create a new customer and that would just be the name of the house pretty much like the address. That's how I do it. So for example, let's say the house is 34 long. Avenue. You can just call it 34 long and that is your customer. So that's step one. You need to have some kind of customer first to do the next step. The next step is to add a project. So to add a project, I can go to the projects tab here or it's built right in. I can go to project and I can do add my first project for this customer. And so for this, I'm going to name this project something. So this would be something like 34 long renovation. Okay. Now actually, this could be something you do for a rental property too, by the way, okay? It doesn't have to be specific to flipping. But you see that it requires us to have a customer here. So if I didn't have that 34 long as a customer, I wouldn't be able to create this project. And that's why we need to use customers if we want to use this feature. And I can click save. And there it is. So here's my 34 long project. And so I would track income, costs, ultimately profit. Now income for this project is not going to come until I sell it. Okay, so I'm going to have a lot of costs building up and a negative profit for a while. Okay, now if you're doing a residential remodeling business, this would be an area where you would have some income coming in. You would have people you know, paying you deposits and, and um, paying you for your time at different periods throughout the project. Okay, so projects is a neat way to kind of organize things. You could have your overview, your list of transactions, time activity if you have employees or contractors and then ultimately some project reports, okay? So what we're gonna do now that I have this here, this is kind of my shell, what I could do is I could start adding expenses, but what I encourage you to do and what some of these rehab expense videos do as well is we make use of the products and services field within QuickBooks to give us a super high level of detail if we need it, okay? So if you haven't seen those videos, watch them. I'm gonna show you how to kind of back back track a little bit to get set up with that. So the thing we need to do is to tell our expenses where to go on our profit and loss. And if you look at my profit and loss statement right now, I'm just gonna pull it up so you can see what charts of accounts I have set up. So here's a profit and loss, and if I display all of my accounts that hit the profit and loss, 
Um, let's see, show columns all. Okay, so here's my profit and loss. Right now you can see this is kind of set up. These are mostly for rental properties. Okay, that's what these expense categories are for. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add some cost of goods sold accounts to track my rehabs, okay? Now, right here it might look like, oh, I'm muddling rehabs and rentals, but what I'm gonna do, what you should do is you can split that up by if you pull a profit and loss for just your rental properties, it wouldn't show the rehab accounts that we're going to add. All right, so let's add those rehab accounts. If I go to my accounting tab, chart of accounts, we can see that under my cost of goods sold, I have a bunch of these here and they're almost all, um, they're almost all for rental properties, okay? So what I'm gonna do next, is I'm gonna add a, one account for rehab costs. All right, and I'm gonna call this cost of goods sold I'm gonna call this rehab costs. Now, if you are doing a renovation on a rental property that you're gonna hold for a long period of time, you will not be logging expenses to your P&L. You're going to be capitalizing them and depreciating them, okay? Now, you could do that short term and then journal entry it over, uh, but you have to know that it won't long term be hitting your, um, your P&L. Okay, so rehab costs is right here, and I'm gonna put two sub accounts below that. So I'm gonna do an account for cost of goods sold and I'm gonna do um, subcontractors. And I'm gonna make a sub account of rehab costs. And I'm gonna do save and new. And now I'm gonna do another cost of goods sold. And this one's going to be uh, reno materials. No, I'll just call it materials. Okay, now you might have another one for internal labor. You might have your different categories you wanna use. That's okay. I like to have just a couple of these, not too much more than that. And you might be asking, well, how do we show the, the detailed listing of, you know, I spent this much on electric, that much on plumbing. I'm gonna show you that next. Okay, so now that I have those in there, you can see I have my rehab costs, materials, and subcontractors. And if I go to my reports, I go to my profit and loss, and I kind of open this up to show everything. You can see that I have my rehab cost materials and subcontractors is now there. So how do we get things to show up there? So I could hit the plus button and add an expense, and I could use this category here to do materials. Okay, let's say that I purchase materials, I maybe purchase siding and I spent $3,500, and it was for what customer or project? It was for 34 long renovation. All right, and if I save and close that, it looks like I need to save that report, huh? So let's do all, all. It shows up here. That's cool, that's good, but now I don't, I don't have anywhere to show that that's for siding. It's in my description, but I can't really do much with that, right? I can't draw a report by that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is use my products and services to help me with that, all right? Now, if you haven't turned on your products or services yet, you're gonna to need to go to your account settings, you need to go to your expenses, okay? And uh, let's see here, show items table. You need to make sure that's turned on, okay? So once that's turned on, we're ready to use products and services. And how products and services works is we set up a list of those categories that we're going to be tracking rehabs against. All right, now I have several videos that go into this on de in detail. If you've seen those, you'll know that I have this cool set of accounting codes that I got from the National Association of Home Builders where I have all these cool detailed um, line items that I use, and then I actually import this into QuickBooks. But let's create a few. So for example, you're gonna create these, and we can do like electric, maybe rough electric subcontractor. All right, then all you need to do with this, let's skip this stuff for now, is say that I do purchase this, <clears throat> and then what account, when I make that purchase, does this go into? Well, it would go into my subcontractor's account. Okay, and I can save and close it. That's my first, first one. Now, QuickBooks is gonna give you hours and sales 
and I have this one here. Now let's say that I have one for siding as well. Now I put all of these as service just because I'm importing them. Um, and it doesn't matter. We're not we're not like selling these items, so it doesn't really uh, matter. We're using it most almost all for purchasing. Okay, so I could say siding material. All right, I purchase this product or service. I could put a cost. I know I need to put an expense account. I'm going to put materials. Okay, save and close. And why are we telling it the account to go to? Well, let's take a peek here. So let's go back to a report. Let's do a profit and loss. And let's do, uh, let's just do all dates on my profit and loss. So here's just 3,500 bucks to materials, okay? Why don't I add another expense for side, okay? <clears throat> now here's the new way to do it. Instead of using this category field, I'm gonna use this item details. And this list is gonna pull from my products or services where I can use siding material comes up and I can put siding here and I can say 3,500 customer or project. Let's do 34 long renovation, save and close, and see what happens is this um, that transaction will automatically hit the account I told it to. Okay, let's do one more for that rough electric. All right, let's do an expense for you know, you'd have your, your electrician in there. Let's go item details and let's just say rough electric subcontractor and I can say rough ends and I can say 3450. Why am I all in the 3000s? Let's change it up a little bit. All right, project or customer, save and close. And you can see that now that shows up as subcontractors. And what I love about doing it this way is, is when you drill down into these, you can then group it by product or service. So I can see, if I had a bunch of these, right, how much did I spend on just rough electric, okay? And let's back up a second. Let me change that one transaction here. If I drill down here, I have this expense, that first one I did, where, let's do, not that one. This first one I did where I filled in the category, let's eliminate that and let's fill it in here. Siding material, and let's do, it's like a different amount, 3,400. Save and close. All right, it still shows up in the same place, but what I can do is I can take all of my rehab costs, can click into it, and then instead of grouping by materials or subs, I can group by product or service. And there I have, here's my total rough electric subcontractor, here's my total siding, okay? So um, that's all there and it all looks good, right? So I would suggest you use this methodology so that it shows up on your P&L. Now, if you don't wanna show up on your P&L, you wanna show up on your CapEx, that's okay too. You would just change, instead of having your, your subcontractors and your materials be a cost of goods sold, you'd have those be fixed asset accounts instead. All right, so that's how you get set up with that. Let's go back to our projects for a second just to see how things are showing up for about 34 long. If I click into that, we can see that I have 93.50 in costs. That's pretty cool. And they all show up here as rehab costs, subcontractors, materials. I can drill down into them. It's a really good setup. You can't do that if you're using classes, okay? And then we can do, you know, here's a list of all my transactions. We can pull some project reports. Now profitability is always gonna be negative for now until I start showing my realized gains. Now realized gains would be that, that revenue item, okay? So that's kind of how you, starting from zero, get set up with a rehab project, all right? So I would use customer, I would get into the project, which is technically just a sub-customer, and then I'd set up your charter accounts with a couple to hit your cost of goods sold, and then draw your products and services to those cost of goods sold accounts, okay? So um, if you have any specific questions on that or different scenarios that you'd like me to go over, feel free to put those in the comments here and I can do a response video to that. But for now, I appreciate Andy uh, requesting this video to add some clarity to this. So hopefully this helps some others out there as well. All right, so be sure to check out all the free resources available at Income Digs. Dot com. We have a really awesome QuickBooks course coming out really soon. So um, I, I'm really pumped about it. I think that you're going to gain a lot from it. So feel free to sign up to the VIP list to that. And again, any questions that you have, anything that you want me to demo, 
put it in the comments, send me an email, and I'd be sure to put it on my next video. We'll see you soon.